<laughs> How y'all doing? Good evenings. Good evenings. Good evenings. <sighs> I gotta put a few things in perspective for my folks. How is everybody? How is everybody tonight? <clears throat> Good rise, Crystal. Good rise. <laughs> <laughs> good wade in the water. No, good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening. Good evening. Hey, Natasha, how are you? Ooh, we're at seven. Okay, that's the end of them haze. Peace and blessings. Salam, shalom, hotep. How is everybody? Yeah, um, we're going to put a couple of these double standards to rest right quick. Peace, Uma. What's up, Cheryl? We're going to put a couple of these to rest. I was at work, and y'all know, a lot of y'all know that I do stages and um, stage setup. So, um, there's a lot of lifting and pushing and pulling of very heavy things. Um, a lot of teamwork that's involved, uh, putting things up on different brackets and things of this nature. And a lot of what we do is dangerous. So there are very few females in the industry that I'm in. Like there are very few females in martial, the martial arts that I'm in that have excelled at what they do. That being said, I'm working and there's a sister next to me. And she goes, hey, sis, don't do that. Let the men pick that up. What? No, let the men pick that up. I said, no. You're getting paid to do the exact same job he is. I can see if you are not capable of picking. And I think it was a truss. I think it was like a six foot truss. Um, they might weigh 75, maybe 80 pounds, maybe. I can pick one up and I'll have a problem picking it up. But she's like, let him know. See, sisters, this is where our our so-called fight gets gets overlooked. You can't have it both ways. You can't say you want to be equal to men and not do the equal work that he does. I can see if you are physically incapable of doing it. I'm only 5'4". There are some things that I can't do over my head that a brother who's 5'8 can do. So I just move myself around and I go do something that I know that I can do. But as a woman, as a woman, we can't have it both ways. We can't have it both ways. And and it goes it goes even further than that, y'all, because this is where women get into this entitlement that you can stand up to a man and say and do anything that you want to do to him, about him, around him, and then he can't retaliate because you gonna stand behind I'm a woman. No, no, you cannot have it both ways. And even being in this industry, I can be pushing a cart and a brother, man, whoever go, hey, fee, you got that? If I don't have it. Then I say, no, nah, bro, I need some help. If I do have it, no, nah, bro, I'm okay. But not, oh, no, I just can't do this because I just. And then we find you standing on the sidelines just not doing nothing under the guise that you're a woman. You can't have it both fucking ways. 
Choose your fucking side and get on it. You can't do it. That's how that's how the so-called feminist movement gets laughed at. If you are getting equal pay, do equal work. And I outwork some of the men that I'm around. They might be taking one poll. I'll take two. And not because I'm trying to outwork them. It's not that. It's that I'm doing what I know I'm capable of. If he wants to work under his par, that's fine. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Because I'm going to work at par. And if you feel bad about that, brother, at the end of the day that a woman has outworked you, then maybe we can work with you because now you got a little bit of pride. But if that don't bother you one way or the other, then we can't work with you because you don't have pride enough to do your work well. But brothers, you can't have it both ways either. If you want a feminine woman who's going to, as y'all say, submit, you have to provide a few things. There is no reason why she has to go out, earn her living, earn her own living, yours and the children, come home and submit to you. That is not how that works. You can't be the girl in the house and the man when the when the and the man when the bread when the bread provider walk in. It don't work like that. It does not work like that. If you want to be the head of the household. Be the, be the provider. Like my mama would say, he who earns the most money works the least in the house. You cannot have it both ways. Brother, you cannot talk about how that sister raised your children and you were the missing element. You lost your right to talk about that single mother when you didn't show up for the parenting call. You cannot have it both ways. Brothers, because you are missing out of your household, we have another generation of children that are coming up hating their fathers. And just like you hated your father for not being there, because I think Tupac said it best in one of his raps, my anger couldn't let me feel for a stranger. Y'all have turned around. And because y'all are so busy chasing pussy. You forgot that all of that time that you have spent chasing pussy, you could have been taking care of your children because they were the ones who deserved your time. Whether you got along with mama or not. Whether you say she took you and, and tricked you into having that baby because she wouldn't have an abortion. Makes not a damn bit of difference. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot tell me you love me on one hand. I love this type of sister. And every time this type of sister turn around, you with that type. Pick your motherfucking side, bruh. 
Pick your side because I'm, I'm sorry. There are a lot of conscious women, very conscious women, and they single. But y'all love tools. You love tools. You love hoes. You love ratchets. <laughs> if it's crazy, you love it. Because sisters that are like me, that's not going to give you a problem. That's not going to get put children on you. That's going to work with you. Y'all don't want them. It ain't enough drama in your life. She ain't sitting on your ass. She's actually allowing you a little bit of freedom to make the proper choices on your own. You know that, what's that called? God damn, I missed, what's the call? Manhood. Yeah, she's actually allowing you to be a man instead of her boy. Because I hate to tell you, brothers, a lot of y'all like to be told what to do. Like you have a mama complex. And whether you like it or not, you really, really, re yeah, thank you, hoes, ratchets, and diggers. Love tools. And heard a brother explain it tonight. He's like, well, sister, that's because black women require too much. Require too much? What you mean? You got to come to a sister, correct? You make that sound like it's a bad thing. This brother made it sound like being a black woman and expecting my black man as a counterpart is asking him too much. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And I kind of came on to see what brothers would think of this, but I see none of them are really, none of them are really saying anything. So I'm just going to take it that maybe, I don't know. I don't know if I'm right or wrong on this one, but I'm going to say it again. Can't have it both ways. We can't want, and how about this one? We can't have a revolution. We can't have a black revolution and brothers and sisters, y'all keep, y'all keep bringing other nationalities to the fucking table. Let another black nationalist walk up to me and have other than a black woman on his I, I mean an American an Afro-American black woman on his arm I am going to scream bloody murder I'm gonna scream bloody murder it's like how can we be a solid unit and <sighs> You got an Asian sitting at the table. How can we talk and you got Becky sitting at the table? How can we talk and you got Gustav sitting at the damn table? How are we going to reconcile our differences and y'all keep bringing other nationalities into our problems. How? I know. I I understand. I always wondered why China, when they decided to reform, they dropped an iron curtain. 
I know why they did it. I know why they did it. Because in order to change that country that damn quick, they had to isolate everybody. So y'all couldn't, so they couldn't fuck up. It's called a complete reprogramming. Now everything is about China. If you are Chinese, it is about China. Do not let them fool you. Everything is for the motherland. And that came from dropping that iron curtain. And as black folk, we let any and everybody in the front, back. We let them in the front door. We let them in the back door. We let them in the side door. We, we hide them in the attic. They in the basement. You go looking around and you be like, God damn, who is this? And what? Why is she cooking rice in the closet? Never mind. Never mind. Who's rolling tamales in the basement? Y'all are killing me. You're killing me. You're killing me. And, you know, whatever. I right. That's why we ain't won yet. Because we're... we're we have no bite to our convictions. We have to remember, in order for y'all to stop being able to sit in the back of the bus because you had to, they had to boycott those buses for months. That meant nobody rode. Let me say that again. That meant nobody rode. Let me say that again. That meant nobody rode the damn bus. But we can't get y'all to stop watching fucking football. What has football done for you? You can't have it both ways. You can't have a revolution and still enjoy the luxuries that keep your ass trapped. The NFL don't give a fuck about you. But y'all gearing up. You gearing up. You can't keep, if black men, if black men could quote war strategies like they quoted NFL stats, we'd be fucking unstoppable. If black men got together for war parties instead of tailgate parties, we might be just a little further in this goddamn fight than we are. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. They can't. They can tell you who the players were from the time they came up as a pup to right now on their any given team, but can't tell you three congressmen, can't spit out two senators, probably couldn't tell you who the mayor of their fucking city is. But they know how much the quarterback make. Priorities. Fucked up. You can't have it both ways. Sooner or later, y'all gonna have to put your foot down somewhere. And brothers, your foot's shaky. It's real shaky. I don't understand what's going on. I really don't. But we're all trying to have it both fucking ways. And you can't. You cannot be addicted to your illness while you're trying to heal. Let me say that again. You can't be addicted to your goddamn illness while you trying to heal. What about black sisters fighting each other over a man? What about sisters that are allowing men to hide behind her when he don't care about his duties as a... That's too much. That's too much. That's the problem now. Everybody trying to have it both damn ways. I mean, come on. Come on. Most men have more than one baby mama. 
Most women have more than two sets of children, two or more sets of children in their house. And we have allowed all of it. Let's stop acting like we're victims. We're not victims. We did everything that we did knowing that we were doing it when we did it. Own your bullshit. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. Brother knew he went in without his condom on. And if he did break that bitch, maybe you should have figured that out before you started coming in her. How about that? Take everybody, take their fucking responsibility. Buy black. That's the new fucking slogan. Y'all don't mean that shit. You don't mean that shit. What you mean is I will be conveniently buying black while I stay my black ass in Walmart, Fiesta, and every other goddamn place I can because I can't grow nothing. I ain't even tried. Y'all talk good armed revolutionary bullshit, but that's exactly what the fuck you are. An armchair goddamn revolutionary. Now sit your motherfucking ass down, grab you some popcorn, get you that nasty ass water that you always sucking on, talking about Asheo. Shut up. Because I'm going to say this again. This is the best dressed war I have ever been in. We don't sacrifice nothing for nothing. It makes no goddamn sense. None. And don't nobody want to pay no dues. Everybody want everybody want the damn answer, but don't nobody want to pay no dues. How about this? How about this? Did anybody did anybody grow another pineal gland during the eclipse? Because everybody made this eclipse out like, oh shit! Afterwards, we're gonna glow in the dark. The mothership is coming. Oh! Now after the fucking storm, Houston waiting on a goddamn hurricane so we don't blow the fuck away. What happened to the special powers everybody was supposed to get after seeing this damn eclipse? Oh, is the moon back in retrograde? Y'all be killing me with this bullshit. Most of y'all couldn't make a goddamn star chart, let alone know the information to start making one. It requires way too much math and way too much sense and way too much time and way too many disciplines to cross each other. Y'all motherfuckers know y'all be using the app on your damn phone. And if that app is fucked up, so is your goddamn shit. But as soon as you hear one person on Facebook go, ooh, the moon is in retro grade all of a sudden every nasty little shit fucking goddamn thought you have is because the moon is in retrograde how about you just an evil little fuck that hasn't decided to grow up yet how about that ain't nobody gonna say that though right everybody gonna be like yeah the moon is in retrograde no how about you grow the fuck up yeah ain't nobody gonna say that though right Can't have it both ways. Cannot have it both ways. And we ain't even willing to try. We're not even willing to try. Most of y'all have relationships you ain't even willing to go nowhere else with. You ain't going to let them go and you ain't going to let them stay. I know folk right now that's that's been lied to me so many motherfucking times behind a goddamn relationship. Oh, I'm leaving. No, you not. Shut up. Y'all go through these fucking cycles. That shit happened every eight months. She turn around, fuck up, fuck over you. 
take the money out the bank, get ready to take the kids, you boo-hoo, holla, you gonna leave, she turn around and figure out she can't have the lifestyle you have, have her in no more, she start crying, breaking down, she ain't gonna do it no more, you let her back in, and it starts all the fuck over again, every eight goddamn months, and I have known this man for about eight years now, and we've gone through about nine cycles of this bullshit, they're addicted to this shit. They don't even know how to turn it off. Now think about all the relationships in your life and how you can't turn that shit off. All the men that you have attracted that have taken your shit. I mean, taking your shit, I mean, left you emotionless, pained, no money, no security. Make you question yourself. How about brother that sister. That you thought was so cute. And she took your money. She had sex with your best friend. You found out that she 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 did some old shady stuff with your uncle. She kicked your dog. And you still love her dirty ass draws. I need y'all to remember people can be addicted to anything. Some people are addicted to their own failures. Let me say that again. Some people are addicted to their failures. You wonder why some people can't win. There are some people that get right up to winning. They get right there and they just lose it every time. This is somebody who is addicted to losing. You want to know why? They don't want the responsibility of winning. Because if they win, they will be expected to win again and again and again and again. And they don't want that type of responsibility. Because it takes an amount of responsibility to be a winner. And be okay. Be okay. Now, if you want to be with somebody like that, knock yourself out. But I need you to look at people's patterns again. Look at people's patterns. Look at their life patterns. And ask yourself if you want to fit in that pattern. Because people only live patterns. It takes certain people to break out of patterns. But then you have to have a degree of discipline. You have to be able to change your mind. To break out of a pattern. Every Think about the brother that goes from woman. He goes from one woman and he gets her pregnant. That baby don't turn a year and he's on to the next one to get her pregnant. On to the next one to get her pregnant. On to the next one to get her pregnant. And then before you know it. He's in his mid 20s with six kids. He ain't taking care of not one of them. But all of the baby mamas got problems. All of the baby mamas are in his ass. All of the baby mamas want something. All the baby mamas is hoes. All the baby mamas ain't, ain't raising the kids right. But brother, you didn't move on six, seven, eight times. And the only women that you don't want are the ones that didn't give you babies or problems because the ones that gave you babies became a problem. Some people are addicted to failure. Some people don't want the responsibility of winning.
I have to thank some people for really putting themselves out on the line for attempting to get to this retreat. I put myself out on the line. I paid for my retreat myself. So the same price y'all see on that retreat, I paid too. I put myself on a payment plan. I said there were a few things that I just was not going to do. I was going to divert that over to my uh, vacation, to this re- to the sister's retreat. I think I paid for that retreat in less than three weeks. Just by disciplining myself and saying, I need this retreat. I need this more than I need that over there or this over here or that over there or this over here. And in doing that, I accumulated all the money I needed. All of it. To go do what I need to do to take care of me. We're having a sister's retreat. Um... In October, I believe it is, it's over on the U University page. Um, if I can get somebody to throw that link in here, that would be helpful. Um, but it's about what you want to give up. And I'll tell y'all, you know, a lot of y'all know my story. But I met my teacher. <laughs> I met my teacher because I was willing to give up the last $7 in my pocket. To change. A lot of people wonder why I called my son seventh. And it has a lot to do with that. It was the last seven dollars in my pocket. For the month. I wasn't sure how I was going to get any more money. But his seminar cost seven dollars and that's all I had in my pocket. And giving my last seven dollars changed my entire life. Now, some people will say, well, fee, it was just seven dollars. When it's your last, it might as well be a thousand. When you have no idea how you are going to eat, pay your rent. Get from one side of the city to the next. It was everything that I had. And I gave it. I gave it up. To be who I am now. It might as well have been a thousand dollars. And if it was a thousand dollars. I would still give it to this day to be who I am right now. So when you are ready to sacrifice yourself in that manner, then you are ready. When you are ready to give your last for change for somebody to change your mind when you cannot it should be worth anything it should be worth everything and I thank my teacher to this day for taking everything from me and giving me back only myself. For giving me a clear mind so I could focus. So I could be free. How much are you willing to give to be free? You can't have it both ways. There's no such thing as a free slave. (laughs) You're either a slave 
or you free. And free men don't ask anybody for anything. You go get it. Only slaves ask. <laughs> Go get it. Give your last to change your mind. Because that's the price you have to pay. Birds do not ask to be fed. Fish do not ask to be fed. The trees do not ask to be fed. The clouds do not ask to move. The river does not ask permission to carve anything through. The wind does not ask permission to blow. The sea does not ask permission to roar. Because they are not slaves. Stop asking permission. Be free. Go get it. It's yours. Anything that is not yours, you cannot have, even if you want it. But things that are yours, you can surely leave behind looking for stuff that ain't. And when you figure you've left so much on the battlefield that was yours, chasing after shit that ain't, I hope that day you do not gnaw on your fingers to the bone. Y'all get out of here. Sleep on that. I'll be throwing that sister's retreat up. Come on out, y'all. I got something for us. There's never been a retreat where people did not leave changed. Not while I'm around. I paid for it. I'm not doing this for free. I don't believe in telling people to do stuff that I ain't willing to do myself. The sister got the sister has her seats to prove it. Love y'all. Peace and blessings. This is Sister Fee. I always got my ear to the street. My ear to the street. My ear to the street. Y'all take care. Hey, share this. If you have not joined U University, get on over there. I'm having another members drive right quick. So if you know people who would like to come on in to our group, I'm open to let folk in. So if you like these mind hack, if you like these mind hack videos, they are all over at U University. So you don't have to scroll through my page every day and all of my simple mind crap. You can just go straight over to university and pick these up. Again, love y'all. Go get some water. If you're in Houston, start picking your stuff up out of your yards. We might get some wind going on. Batting down the hatches. Ain't no telling what's going to happen. Peace and blessings. Salam, shalom, hotep.